Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. By now, you probably have at least one debit or credit card with a chip, and you have heard the reports that they're supposed to be a lot safer. But did you know your accounts could still be compromised? Good evening. Thank you for joining us. The new chip cards were rolled out just months ago, and they're supposed to help stop fraud. But as Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop tells us, the cards are not 100% effective at stopping accounts from being hacked, especially if you used it for online purchases. The new chip cards are aimed at stopping criminals from skimming cards. The EMB chip is really designed to limit or defeat card counterfeiting. Dan Fisher works for the Copper River Group, a worldwide business that does research and consulting in the financial industry. He says with the new chip cards, people will see fraud increase online. Card not present fraud will go up. So if you're on the internet, you know, you need to be forever watchful in that regard until these other new technologies are fully rolled out. A person just needs the card number, expiration date, and CVV code, and they could have access to your account. Fisher says it is important for people to protect their computers and phones with malware and antivirus protection. Anyone that goes and shops online without that, uh, without that protection is stark naked in a cold wind. Many companies have the new card readers, but some, like smaller businesses and even gas stations, are not on board yet. Skimmers can't counterfeit the chip. That is correct. Okay. Skimmers can if you're using a MagStripe. Fisher says you can still be hacked if you're using a MagStripe at the businesses. Just days ago, we told you about a West Fargo couple that received their new chip card in the mail, and their information was stolen. Fisher says he thinks their old card was skimmed and not yet deactivated. In Fargo, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. Fisher says as businesses amp up protections against criminals, those criminals will change with the times to meet their needs. Fargo police have identified the six people arrested in a South Fargo drug bust. The Fargo Police Narcotics Unit and Metro Area Street Crimes, Street Crimes Unit searched a home in the 1900 block of 54th Avenue South, finding marijuana and ecstasy pills at as a result, Marvin Berry Jr., Marlo Bell, Mandy Schroeder, Tiana Schroeder, Mercedes Clark, and D'Angelo Murdaugh were arrested. According to police, one of the more serious charges they could face is intent to distribute within 1,000 feet of a school. We couldn't get away from the clouds today, but we're still getting ready for spring fever. Let's get the details from Hutch Johnson in First Weather. Hutch? Thanks so much, Andrea. As we went through the overnight, we saw some fog set in, and it took a while for that deck to finally lift, and it has magnificently sunshine aplenty as we head into the evening. And why not? The best part of your day as you're heading home from school and work. Here's a look at that visible satellite loop, and only this afternoon starting to clear. And even if you are in the northern Red River Valley, we should see that trend continuing in places like Grand Forks and Crookston as well as eventually Cavalier. Temperatures where there's sun, very mild. 59 right now in Jamestown. Temperatures only in the 30s, though, in northwest Minnesota for Thief River, Roseau, Bedette. Your planner this evening, near 40 to 43 degrees in Fargo. Southeast winds and clear skies. Temperatures near 40 as well in Fergus Falls. And it does look like we're going to anticipate a little bit more cloudiness, at least in the early part, but a chance at 40 degrees later tonight in Grand Forks. We have some near record uh, high temperatures to talk about over the next few days and a chance of a snow storm taking aim on the northern plains. We'll have details on all of that in a moment. All right, thanks, Hutch. Mm -hmm. A man involved in two separate stabbings will not be charged for the one that occurred in downtown Fargo. Court documents say Herbert Brady was defending his home, something allowed under North Dakota law. According to the documents, Brady's neighbor believed he was owed money and went to confront Brady about it. The neighbor admitted that he was intoxicated at the time. Brady told police he was immediately punched upon opening the door and then somewhere in the scuffle stabbed the neighbor several times. Court documents again show Brady was likely acting in self-defense. The slumping agriculture and oil economies in North Dakota have left a $1 billion shortfall. It has also left its universities scrambling to implement budget cuts. The governor has ordered state agencies to cut their budgets by 4%. As Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us, that will mean some tough choices at UND in Grand Forks. 
Interim UND President Ed Schaefer has asked all departments to present him with a plan to operate on nine million fewer dollars. Schaefer says the budget shortfall will not fall on the backs of students. We don't want any um, impact on students, uh, so we're not going to look at uh, raising tuition or raising fees to take care of this. Uh, we're approaching it to say um, we want to, uh, you know, we want to keep our family intact here as much as we can. No specifics yet on whether cuts will include staff or programs. Schaefer is expected to get lists of priorities from each department by the end of the month. We want to take those priorities and fully fund those priorities with the dollars we have. Um, it isn't a basis of, you know, what's, uh, what's used the most or who has the most popular professor or, you know, what the, what the best color of the building is. You know, it's an issue of what is the top priority to the delivery of the student experience here at UND. One particular UND entity that's being asked to take a big chunk out of its budget is the School of Medicine. It's being asked to cut $3.1 million, while its new $124 million School of Medicine and Health Sciences building is still under construction. Med School Dean Dr. Joshua Wynn tells me that will likely mean delaying the start of some of their planned health science training programs. The overall UND budget plan, including cuts, is expected later next month. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. UND will also have to figure out how to pay for an upgrade to its steam plant, which could be as much as $20 million. Secretary of State Al Jager has approved the petition to get the legalization of marijuana on the next ballot. Sponsoring committee needs nearly 13,500 signatures to get the measure on the ballot for voter consideration. The leader of the sponsoring committee, Eric Olson, says that all signatures must be collected in person and that they are in the process of setting up events in cities across North Dakota. As of right now, there are two events coming up in Fargo. They'll be holding a meeting for signature collectors at the Red Raven Espresso Parlor Friday night starting at 630 and in front of Mindat Gold Exchange on Broadway during the St. Patrick's Parade Saturday starting at 1. Signatures must be turned in before midnight on July 11th. For more information about upcoming events, go to valleynewslive.com and click on the hot button. Although the ground may not be ready, there are still some plants you can start in your home before spring. Valley News Team's Christy Larson tells us what items you can start growing now. If you've been a little anxious to get your hands dirty this spring, you want to get a head start on your gardening, you can do so inside. At least that's what Todd, Todd Weinman's been telling me. And so what should people be starting with right now that they can start growing indoors and later move outdoors? Right now is a great time to start growing peppers. A lot of people will have a certain pepper that they enjoy more than another, and um, you can't always find the, maybe the exact kind you want or you want to grow your own. Um, peppers would be perfect. Broccoli is a good one. Um, many times people say, well, I want to grow tomatoes for myself and I want to start them indoors. I would wait a couple weeks yet before you do that. Um, if you haven't started your onions, they, they, they could have been started about two weeks ago, so I would definitely start some onion seeds if you're going to. Herbs are fantastic to start right now. So. And then also we have, not only should you use some of that store-bought soil, but you also have some of these pods where you can put the seed right in it and put it into your container. Yep. And they'll expand. Um, you add water to these, and they'll just swell right up to that size. Um, really easy, straightforward. It's fun. I know that a lot of people are excited since we have been having those warmer temperatures, so it's good news that if you do have a green thumb, you can get started on things right now. If you have questions about gardening, you are also encouraged to call your local extension agent. This unseasonably warm weather is giving Fargo Park goers the chance to enjoy the great outdoors a little early this year. And you can now drive in and drive through if you wish. The gates at Lindenwood, Oak Grove, Trollwood, Iwin, and Trefoil Parks are open. But don't expect full services just yet. The people at the Park District say it'll likely be mid-April or so before the restrooms will be available. Same goes for the bike or pedestrian bridges across the river. The frost needs to come off, and so do the road restrictions before the parks are in summertime mode. United